Well, that's a little unconventional, but we'll go with it. Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I'm out on a Friday afternoon for a wee jaunt. It's a no plan plan. I'm on Loch Catching and I thought I'll take the bike out, do a wee bit of bike packing in, in land along the loch and then I'll try and find a spot for camping tonight if the weather's okay. But the weather has been pretty poor the last few days. It's warm down south but it's terrible here. The clag is really down so I thought I'm not going to go for a hill walk, there'll be no views. So I'm not aiming to go too high. I might do some minor hills above the loch catching but uh, yeah, nothing major. So, anyway, follow me along, we'll see how we get on in this wee one. I'm just going to kind of cycle in for a few miles and we'll play it by you. Nice, very quiet now, which is what I wanted, away from the crowds and the tourists. Just the odd cyclist and me. Nice. I can see the double beach away over there that I once kayaked over to and stopped on for lunch. Nice though. Nice new cycle path I've never been on before. So you're not the tarmac anymore, you're going along the shore. And I think it cuts one of the hills out, which is good. So just arrived at a wee picnic spot it says. I'm just going to look in case I can camp here tonight. First disaster. I've lost my brand new filter bottle. My fault, I put it in that pocket there which is not that secure and it's come out so I'm going to have to retrace my last mile or so, see if I can find and it. Easy. Found it. It was actually really close, I think it was when I got off. I must have hit it with my leg and knocked it out of the pocket. But lesson learned. Reached a wee bit of a high point here, it's a really nice view. Uh, looking down to Queen Victoria's cottage, there's quite a story about that. Apparently Queen Victoria was coming to visit or stay in this place and they fired off some cannons as a kind of salute to her and the windows blew out and she couldn't stay and had to go back home, which I thought was quite funny. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So I'm going to head round to over that area to the restaurant over there. spot some nice wee islands as well I'm sure one of them is fairly significant but I think it's the one away over that side near the restaurant and the ferry terminal another nice lovely spot just filling up my water bottle so just reached the end of the loch and it's a, it's a windy end a lot windy here which is good I'm hoping that will be good for camping tonight and the midges will stay away so I'll just head round to the cafe check out the pier and then we'll head back, but at the moment I've got just over half a battery, I think, yep. So we've made it to a breezy Stronach Lacher, and it's time to head back, I think. Uh, I'm just going to have a snack, but... To be honest, you spend so little energy on this bike, it's embarrassing to take a snack. So I'm going to head back now and uh, probably head towards the end of the loch near the Ben and end, Ben Ann end, and try and find a camp spot or something. I may dump the bike and then start walking up the hill, but we'll decide when I get there. 20 past five, so yeah, by the time I get back, it'll probably be six o'clock before camping up somewhere, at least. I've always like this wee holiday cottage. We'll need to try and rent it at some time. Such a nice setting, looking down the loch. On the way back, and uh, probably 20 minutes, half an hour hopefully, then I think I'll probably just dump the bike and hide it, and then take the rucksack, because I want to um, try it again. I've got this uh, flex capacitor from Sierra Designs, which have the rates and I've found it very comfortable so far but I've not really had much chance to use it. So yeah we'll, uh, we'll go out and use that in a minute and then go and find a campsite. Ten past six, that's getting on. Okay, I'll get 
20% left, 25% in the battery, but it's definitely tailing off, I think, already. So, yeah, I think it's time to do some walking and get up this hill and try and find a camp spot. But I need to hide this bike. Right, that's that. Secreted. I'm probably covered in ticks. Trying to get that bike in there, actually, because it's absolutely just a fern fest. So, here's hoping I'll need to check later. Changed out the bike for leg power and uh, let's head up, see if we can find a spot. So yeah, I got the Sierra Designs Flex Capacitor, so I'm hoping to use it in the Tour de Mont Blanc in about a month or so. It's slightly heavier than my Osprey Levity, which is annoying. I don't know whether to go for a full ultralight pack around about 500 to 750 grams or something. Well, that's just obsessing. Um, but yeah, this is very comfortable. I've got a fair amount of weight in it. I'm not actually sure what, I didn't weigh it this morning, but uh, yeah, probably between seven and 10 kilos maybe. I'm absolutely Lee Marvin. I've had nothing since lunchtime. Not even a snack on that bike or whatever, which was fine going there, but see coming back was a lot more hills. It just seemed much more steep, a lot of climbing. And even with battery power, right down into the granny and uh, powering on my leg power with a tiny wee bit of assist uh, so yeah I'm starving just found this on the trail a life straw filter and an aspivenin looks like some form of uh, bug uh, repellent I guess a litre of water behind me there for cooking and whatnot, so let's just get up there before it looks like the clag's coming in. The Archaeops is looking a bit damp. Better towards Ben Ann, we'll try and get this tent up. Tick city in here. Ferns everywhere, brushing against me. Damn it, I've had a porridge accident. It's everywhere. Right, very questionable campsite. To be honest, I've got a flood behind me, but I'm hoping it won't get too wet during the night. I've got no footprint with me either, so I'm relying on the hydrostatic heads on the Lightwave Sigma S10. I think it's time to pause this workout. Well, we finally got a wee home set up. What a disaster that was. Porridge gate. There's porridge everywhere. I've emptied the rucksack. Half the porridge was in it. So I'm hoping that if any mice come out tonight, they'll get distracted by the pile over there rather than start eating through the tent and through my pack. So I'm going to get hydrated and then I'm going to get some dinner on and a wee gin and tonic. Looking forward to it. The rain is still on. It's kind of coming and going. It's just light rain. It's not too bad. So hopefully I can cook outside safely. But at least I'm undercover. Here's a question for you. I had COVID. Caught it again. Had it for about a week. Um, and it was fine. It was just like a bad cold. But since then, I have, it seemed to occur just when I got it, I now get dizzy spells. So if I lie back and I put my head back, um, I can get suddenly get dizzy and it'll throw me completely. The room spins and then I'll fall over to the right. So I've got to be kind of careful when I get up and move around initially. It's fine when I'm up and around most of the time during the day, but for whatever reason, when you start to relax at night, it kicks in. Does anyone else suffer from that? It's, it's a bit of a strange one. So... A big shout out to Cospit, who sent me the Tank T3 Ultra smartwatch. I've actually had this for a couple of weeks. And I've been using it every day, just wearing it day to day. And actually, I'm quite impressed with it. Um, first of all, I really like the build quality on it. It's just really nicely made, right down to the little screw heads on it. If you look in there, it's also got a very nice definition screen. Um, and I think this is obviously, um, it's kind of military grade or whatever, so it's the usual tough as old boots. The screen is Gorilla Glass, but it also comes with a screen protector you can put on it, which I haven't done yet, to be honest. But yeah, I like the finish on it. I really like that kind of copper insert, that kind of gasket engine look almost. Um, and it's it's just like all the other smartwatches, you've got a million and one different functions. It says it comes with a silicon strap, which you have to put on yourself, but it's fine. It's just got these wee spring clips here that just click it into the case. I like the way I can screen save my photos onto it as well. So I, I've just got one saved on here, which is taken on Barra. It's just as well made as any brand I've seen, to be honest. You know, like the Suntos of the world and all the big brands. To me, it looks just exactly the same. 
The other thing I like is the definition on the screen. I find the screen graphics uh, very good. Let me just go back here. It's got four buttons on the side. Heart rate, oh, there you go, 67 beats per minute. Not too bad, I'm beginning to relax. You've got the functions you get from all smartwatches. And the screen itself is very responsive. So I find it spins no bother at all. All the usual stuff in there. Compass is always handy. In fact, I never actually looked to see which way I'm facing. There you go, that's quite good. The one thing I would say is, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't support mapping at the moment. It will obviously use GPS to track, but it doesn't actually allow you to put maps on the screen yet. But um, I use it in conjunction with the app on the phone. I quite like the barometric pressure. Barometric pressure is obviously one I'm interested in. Uh, weather. Yeah, that's about right. <laughs> Drizzle. The heart rate monitor is always one I like. Uh, there you can see some of the record of how it's been going today, I think, as I cycled round. Unlike some of the ones I had previously, the battery life in this has been really good. Um, so, yeah, I'm getting about a week out of it on charge at the moment. Um, and I don't have everything set up to be active all the time. I hate listening to my emails coming in all the time. So I've disabled things like that at the moment. But, yeah, actually, I'm very impressed with the battery life on it. Flashlight is good. I use that, actually, for low light reading in my bed. I'm going to have to sneak into the bedroom after Jan's sleeping so I don't wake her up. 36% left at the moment. The GPS, if you watch this, sometimes it's a wee bit slow to connect. It's one thing I've noticed. I don't know it's, it's because I normally use it. Oh, no, there you go. To be fair, that's not real criticism. That picked up the GPS signal, no bother. And then you just go straight into recording your exercises. And off you go. Heart rate, distance, duration, pace... Um, etc. So yeah, really nice. Thank you to Cosmet for sending me it. I'm very impressed. I, th I honestly thought it'd be a lot more expensive than it is. I think it's about £120. I'll put a discount uh, link below. But yeah, um, for £120 I think it's really nice. I actually thought, and I tried to guess what I thought it might be before I looked at the cost, and I guessed about 250 to 300 So I'm pleasantly surprised. <laughs> looking forward to this so another new piece of kit I've got is this water bottle I think I got it off eBay it's basically the same as the B3 in terms of the filter the bottle is a wee bit just more basic actually with no graphics on it but uh, the total package was about 21 quid if you follow my channel you probably recognize this campsite I actually camped here at the very start of the year in fairly in fact very cold conditions sub-zero and obviously there wasn't a lot of the tree coverage and plant coverage, so it was a nicer camp. At the moment it's a wee bit overgrown. With the rain coming down, I had to choose my spot pretty quickly. So I'm not ideal. I'll show you. I don't know if you can see it there, but there's a big puddle below me there. But the view, it's not too bad. It's all right. I'm fed, I'm watered. I'm going to get the gin and tonic open and some chocolate and all is good in the world. I think it will rain during the night, but I expected that and that's why I didn't go higher. Ben Venu is across there. You can see it's in the clag, so it wasn't worth doing something like that or a Monroe. So I'll be interested to see how the Lightwave S10 fares in this kind of damp conditions. Um, it's now wet on the outside, and uh, although it's breezy, the inside is bone dry at the moment. Not a problem, no condensation whatsoever. But tonight will be the real test when I'm in there for a few hours. And this is the tent I intend to use in the Tour de Mont Blanc. Slightly heavier maybe than a walking pole tent. I could probably have half the weight to five, six hundred grams, but about a kilo just over. It gives me a lot of confidence of the weather turns because it's a very solid tent, very wind stable, which in the Alps in September might be useful it's also warm which is good so i can carry less weight in terms of gear clothing wise see my issue here there's about two inches of standing water just behind the tent but i think there's a wee bit of an upslope i'm hoping that'll just keep that drained tonight should the weather close in swapped out the flex tail mat tonight for the light too just because it packs very compact so it's quite handy on the bike i just thought it would keep my pack smaller but it is very warm and very comfortable Apart from when you're sitting on it, it tends to compress too much and I do get cold spots unless I really hard inflate it, but I don't like doing that. Cheers everybody. Now that's what I call a stealth camp there. Can you see the tent? Here you go. Nicely hidden off the path. Not that this is a busy path in any way. Not expecting many, if anybody, in the next 12 hours.
This is also another new purchase, not sponsored, off eBay. I must have spent about the grand total of seven quid or something on it. But actually it sounds a lot better. It was a replacement for the one I lost. The only thing I would say is it's maybe slightly heavy. Right, I just retired to the tent. The midges out there were horrendous. The wind has just died. No point in sitting outside. They just swooped in like vultures. Flying piranhas. So I've come into the tent. It's after 10 anyway, so I'm just going to chill out, listen to the radio for a wee while, and then head off to sleep. So I'll catch you guys in the morning, assuming there is no overnight disasters. Touch wood. And uh, I'll bring you back in the morning. We'll go for a quick, uh, quite a sharp start, I think. When I get down the road, I've got things to do and I've got a 50k race to go and watch and support some family. So, uh, yeah, it'll be an early start. I'm pleased to say last night there was no condensation issues in the tent. Uh, it kind of alternated between some fairly breezy conditions and then dead still. Um, but damp, claggy and damp. But actually inside, the fly sheet inside is absolutely dry. That carbon coating seems to work well. So all good, I had a nice comfortable sleep. And the mat, that light too, I think is probably my favourite for comfort. I have to say, not, uh, not sponsored, it was given to me. Um, but over a year now probably. But yeah, I continue to use it. It's probably the most comfy when you're lying down. The one thing I would say about last night was an absolute slug fest. Slugs everywhere, slightly creepy. Anyway, I'm on the descent, uh, probably about 15 minutes from the bike. I'm hoping there's enough power to get me back to the ferry terminal. Okay, got the bike back, it's still there, thankfully. We'll just see how much battery we've got left, and then let's head back to that car. Two bars, I think I'll just about get me back. Well, that's it, folks. I'm about five minutes from the car. Absolutely no battery power coming back there, so I'm absolutely shattered. This is a beast to pedal without any battery power. But thank you for watching my wee micro adventure. Hope you enjoyed it. Scenery's okay this morning. It's the rain has stayed off, so I'm going to get back as quick as I can. So if you haven't liked or subscribed to the channel, please do so. Really appreciate it. It helps the algorithms. And I'll see you out there for the, the next one, hopefully next weekend. Thanks again for watching. Cheers.